Hi, it's Tilly here. I hope you've been sitting well. At the exhibitions, one of the first questions people ask me is which model is for them. Well, I like to compare finding the right height to sit on um, to finding the right shoe size. And the best way is to try it out, see what fits. Here are a few pointers I've got to help you guide your students to find out what's the best sitting height for them. When we sit on the floor, the very nature of the position means that our legs and feet have to come up to the same height as the hips. This requires us to have at least 90 degrees flexion at the ball and socket hip joints. Now, as we know, the body is pretty clever and will always take the path of greatest ease. And if there's any stiffness at the hips, meaning that the 90 degrees is difficult to achieve, the pelvis will roll backwards, the required range coming from the lumbar spine. Sometimes this is really obvious and sometimes less so. Once on the floor, or whatever it is you're going to sit on, doing a basic pelvic rocking technique that we looked at in the last video, sliding the sockets over the, the ball of the hip joint will show us how much available a range there is at the hips. If the hips are very stiff, it may not be possible to move out of a posterior pelvic tilt to achieve neutral. Ideally, we want to be in a position where movement is possible in both directions. So when we sit on the butterfly, we can see that there's more movement there. Another good pointer is to look at the relationship between the knees and the hips. Ideally, what we're after is for the knees to be situated below the height of the hips. In most people, as soon as we see that the knees have come up above the height of the hips, this means that the pelvis is going to have rolled back into a posterior pelvic tilt, of course, flattening out the lumbar lordosis. Now, there are people who can have the knees up above the height of the hips and still maintain pelvic neutral, but they're very mobile and they're not, um, it's not so common to see that. So using this relationship between the height of the knees and the hips gives us a guidance to what height we need to be sitting on. It may well be that people need to be sitting on, here we have a flat butterfly together with the standard. This is the height of two regular blocks at the front edge. And then here we have a tall butterfly, which is already the height of two blocks at the front edge together with a flat. Now pretty much this is um, the maximum degree to which I get people to be sitting on the butterfly. I say if they need any more height than this, then they probably would benefit from sitting on a stool or a chair for meditation in particular. Often people want to be able to sit directly on the floor with no props at all, feeling a failure if they can't sit on the floor, even if it means they're uncomfortable and that they're in poor alignment. I like to encourage everyone to use the props that they need to come into a steady sitting position, bearing in mind that when we talk about um, the Sukhasana, we talk about Sthira and Sukha being steady and comfortable. The more comfortable we are, the more the nervous system relaxes and the more our body can relax so that in no time at all, we can really start to enjoy the sitting position and start to feel the improvements in our flexibility and the ability for us to sit cross-legged. So I look forward to seeing you next time. I'm going to be covering another favourite posture for how to improve our ability to sit and for longer periods. I look forward to seeing you then. Namaste.